Let's move to the next Docker component, which is Dockerfile. Docker can build images automatically by reading instructions from a Dockerfile. A Dockerfile is a text document that contains all the commands a user could call on the command line to assemble an image. Using Dockerfile, users can create an automated build that executes several command line instructions in succession. Let's have a quick look at an example of Dockerfile. This Docker file essentially runs an app which we have written in Python language. We start with a Python 2.7 image. After that, we issue certain commands to Docker, almost like a scripting language which Docker can use to actually build a desired image. We pull a Python 2.7 image. Then we add some code to this by copying over all the files from a current directory into this particular location. We then change the code location by using work dir command and install all the dependencies for our code by running pip install requirements.txt file. Finally, we ask Docker to run the python app.py application for us. So based on these commands, we set up a Docker container which already has Python 2.7 installed. We deploy our Flask app code into it and then update all the dependencies before finally running the app. And since we are running a Flask application, we need to install Flask as a dependency. Let's verify that by inspecting our requirements.txt file. So here you can see Flask is listed as the first dependency. And we are also installing Redis because our demo app connects to a Redis database. And just to confirm, we list our container images available on this host. And you can see, we do in fact have Python 2.7 image available to us. So the process of building our image from our Docker file goes something like this. Docker pulls the required image file if it's not available locally then it will pull it from Docker Hub. Then it copies necessary folders and files into the code location within the Docker container. Next, Docker updates the dependencies of the app by running pip install. And finally, Docker launches the app.py file to run the Flask application. As far as our code is concerned, here is the code for our app.py. And you can see this is a very simple app. It connects to a Redis database using this connection information right here. It displays the number of times user has visited this app and stores that number in the Redis database. In other words, it will display the latest hit count for the app. So every time we visit the app, it will increment the hit count and we will get a message which says, hello world, I have been seen n times. So that is the simple functionality provided by this app. Apart from the commands used in our sample Docker file, there are a lot of other commands available to us which can be used in Docker file. You can visit docs.docker.com to find a complete reference on Docker file commands. Okay, after going through our Docker file, we have to take the next step, which is to actually build the Docker image using our Docker file. So let's execute docker build hyphen t web 001. The hyphen t option lets us specify a name or tag for our image. So here web 001 is the name of the image. And now it is building the image following all the commands we used in docker file. Let's give it a few seconds. Okay, now our image is ready. Next, let's execute Docker images. And you can see that our newly created image, Web001, is in the list of available images. The next important component of Docker that we are going to discuss is the Docker Compose. Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. You can use the Docker Compose file to configure your application services. Then, using a single command, you can create and start all the services from your configuration. The Docker Compose file is a YAML file defining services, networks, and volumes. A service definition contains configuration which will be applied to each container started for that service, 
much like passing command line parameters to Docker Run. Likewise, network and volume definitions are analogous to Docker Network Create and Docker Volume Create. Docker Compose is more like heat template in OpenStack or Amazon CloudFormation. Using Docker Compose is basically a three-step process. You define your app environment with the Docker file so that it can be reproduced anywhere. Then you define the services that make up your app in a file called docker-compose.yml so they can run together in an isolated environment. Lastly, you run Docker Compose up and Compose will start and run your entire app. So we can script our environment and Docker Compose will create the environment for us. For our Flask demo app, we've already created a Docker Compose file. Let's review it now. There are two versions of Docker Compose file format. Version 1, the legacy format, which does not support volumes or networks, and version 2, the most up-to-date. For the purpose of this demo, we are using version 2 format, and it is the one which is more prevalent as well. The first section is the services section. This section lists all the services which you want to run as part of this Docker composition. You can list all the containers that make up each service and any options or parameters you need to pass to the service while setting up the container. In our example, the first service is a web app service which runs on Python Flask app. Since we have named our web image web001, we will update our compose file with the same name and we map the port from this container to host. Uh, let's go with port 5000 being exposed on the same port 5000 on the host. By default, the Python Flask apps run on port 5000. Next, we will attach the volumes to our container. The volumes command mounts paths or named volumes onto our containers. Here we can optionally specify a source path on the host machine. So here we will add the current directory from the host path to the code folder inside our container and this is essentially to run the python app.py file. The next section is the depends on section. This section helps us express dependencies between the services. So docker compose up will start services in the dependency order. In the following example, Redis will be started before the web. So basically, we are saying that our web001 service depends on Redis. And Redis is another service defined in the Docker Compose file. So now we have a Docker Compose file that lets us set up our environment using this file. To run our environment with Docker Compose, all we need to do is to execute Docker Compose up. First, let's execute docker ps command to verify that currently no container is running. Now, let's execute docker compose up command. What's happening in the background is that web001 image is launched and a redis container is launched based on the configuration we provided in our docker compose file. We do not have to run these containers individually. Docker makes sure that these images are built and containers are launched in proper sequence. Before we conclude this demo, let's verify the status by opening another terminal window. You can see here that there are two containers running right now. This is because the example we have been running is a pretty simple one composing of only two containers. But Docker Compose can be used to set up quite complex infrastructures as well. Let's quickly review the status of our running containers. The first container is Redis. It runs on port 6379, but this container port is not exposed to the host. We do not need to since only app needs to connect it from within the container. So we do not need to publish this port. And we have our web001 image, which we built earlier. And this will run the app.py python flask app. We already reviewed the code for this app. It is going to query the Redis database and return the hit count. This image maps the container port 5000 to the host port 5000. Let's execute netstat-tulpn and grep 5000. And you will see a Docker proxy is running at port 5000. 
So any request which comes from the outside of this host on port 5000 is redirected to web001 container. Now if you open the browser and enter our local IP address 10.203.51.25 on port 5000 in the URL address bar and hit enter to open the application we see that our app is running fine. Every time we refresh or visit the page, the hit count is incremented by one. That verifies that our Docker containers are working as expected. So this concludes our demo of Docker components and functionalities.